I wanted to do a quick video about the Jetty Studio application. I've had some friends of mine ask me about Jetty Studio. And so I just wanted to do a quick video on um, some basic information about the Jetty Studio application and uh, how to get it set up and what are some of the features it has. So to get started, you have to go to jettymodel.com. And once you go to jettymodel.com, you'll see information about the Jetty receivers and Jetty transmitters. But uh, what we want to do is we want to go and click on downloads on the front page and then go to Jetty Studio and click on that. Then once we go to that, we can see information about the Jetty Studio application. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, here we have download links for the new version, version 1.1.0. And we have versions available for uh, Linux, Mac, and Windows. And you click on and download the appropriate version for your operating system. This will download. Um, once it finishes downloading, uh, you have to install it. But I'm not going to go over the actual install for the different versions. I think you can figure that part out yourself. Um, once the application has been downloaded and installed, uh, then we'll go through some of the features it has, basic telemetry setup, uh, basic telemetry reading, and the studio application, how it lets you visualize and see your telemetry from your Jetty transmitter. Okay, once we've downloaded and installed the Jetty Studio application, you'll have an icon somewhere in your applications folder for the Jetty Studio app application. It'll look like this. You'll double click it, and then this will open up the Jetty Studio uh, program. Here we see we have various windows. Uh, I know it might look complicated, but it's not very complicated. It's very simple, and we'll walk through some easy steps. Um, the previous version of the application, you used to have to import all of your log files, but now you don't have to. Now the application will sync with your JD radio and you have all your different models available here in the model selection window. As you can see from my various different models that I have available for my transmitter. So uh, we're going to uh, choose the Goblin speed and then we're going to scroll through and pick a uh, log file from approximately a year ago. We're going to scroll down here. And we're going to get to, let's see, let's stop at August 3rd. And let's open up this log file, double click it, and this will show all of your various uh, telemetry files here or telemetry. Uh, sensors that you have connected to your model. So we've got uh, the receiver voltage, uh, we've got battery voltage from the J-Log sensor, <coughs> along with the RPM, uh, the temp FET, which is the temperature of the ESC. Uh, we also have from my power box GPS, uh, we have the speed of the helicopter as it's flying through the air. So since I'm a speed pilot, I'm going to drag and drop the speed telemetry file over to the chart window and now we have a chart of the speed of the helicopter and I'm going to drag the battery voltage because I want to know what the battery voltage was and now it adds the battery voltage to the chart so we can see the speed and the battery voltage and let's go back and let's grab one more let's gra just grab the RPM <coughs> and drag and drop that over and now we have the RPM we have speed and we have the battery voltage from the jetty telemetry. And over here in the middle, we also have the actual values window, which will show you the actual value of that point in time on the timeline. And to help with that, we're going to drag and drop those telemetry items over to the actual values window too. So we're going to drag and drop speed. We're going to drag and drop battery voltage. And we're going to go back and we're going to grab RPM and we're going to drag and drop that in there too. So now you can see we have the various different actual values added to the menu and you can see all of the values in the timeline for that particular point in time 
where I was at. If you slide the timeline back and forth, you can see the actual values change um, as we're going through the timeline and from my flight that I had while I was flying. Um, the values would change as you move through this, the timeline and they correspond to what you were doing at that point in time. Now one thing we can see here is we can see that the color for some of the charts here are off and we'd like to brighten that up to make it a little bit easier to read. So if you right click and you go to RPM, go to properties and click on set color. Now we can change the color of this particular uh, telemetry item in the chart. Let's make this a yellow color here. Let's change it, add it, make it a little brighter. And uh, yeah, I think that looks good. Let's click OK, click OK. And now the RPM is a yellow color. Um, the telemetry for speed is a little hard to see, so let's change the color of the speed too. Let's go to properties and select color. Let's make it a red color. Brighten it up. And I think that looks good. Click OK, click OK. All right, so now we can see the colors for our different uh, telemetry items that we have in the chart. It's a lot easier to see. Uh, speed is a bright red. The battery voltage is a blue, and the RPM is a yellow color. You can choose whatever color you'd like to choose uh, when you're setting up your telemetry for your uh, Jetty Studio app. <clears throat> and as you can see here, uh, none of the values have changed. Uh, the only thing we did was change the color. And let's scroll through the timeline here to right about here. You can see my uh, top speed was 219 kilometers per hour. At that point in time, my battery voltage had dropped to 50.5, and my RPM was at uh, 2,540 RPM. <clears throat> and if you go to the chart, you can also see uh, the question marks, which are actual alarms that I had set on my Jetty transmitter. So the alarms will show up as question marks on your chart when you're viewing the data. Now, that's very helpful because you can see where you had your alarms pop up. And then you can reset the uh, timeline back to the original view um, if you scroll up and down with the scroll wheel on your uh, mouse it'll let you zoom in but uh, let's add something here let's add uh, another window here called a data table so now we have the data table added we can add telemetry values to that let's add rpm and let's go back and let's add one more let's add um, let's see here speed Okay, so now in this data table window, because um, the windows are completely customizable, you can adjust the size of each window and arrange them in the order that you want. But this uh, data table window lets you actually see the actual values on the timeline. Uh, you have three rows here. You've got the time, then you've got the RPM data, then you've got the speed data, and you can see um, in a better resolution um, all the values on the timeline as you were going through your flight you can scroll down and I'm trying to get to approximately where we were on the chart over here let's keep scrolling that's close enough there we go uh, so at that point in time my head speed was at 2550 um, speed was at 219 and then let's go to settings and here you can click on export to Excel and now we can export all that data from the table to an Excel file you can name it uh, whatever you want to name it my telemetry and then you can click Save and now you can have that all this data in an Excel spreadsheet that you can uh, send to your friends or you can export it out and save it for later usage so this is some of the basic features of the Jetty Studio application, how you can view and visualize your data and set up the Jetty Studio application to view your telemetry.